Well, hello, hello. Welcome to the live stream, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody see me? Just checking on the connection of the stream. We got lots of people jumping into the live chat. We got people coming from India and people from Iran. Uh, we have Tofik in the house and James and Vesto and uh, Jalaladin is in the house, who's one of my members, by the way. Thanks for being here, everybody. So excited. Let me know where you're coming from. Uh, let me know your favorite emoji. Put your favorite emoji in the chat. James says, Jesse, I love your content. Thanks so much for all you do. I'm a tattoo artist learning and transitioning into UI and UX. Your content has helped me tremendously. Well, that's awesome, man. That's great to hear, James. My wife was actually a tattoo artist for 15 years. She retired and she focuses on photography now. So, uh, you know, industry switches are quite common. Um, we got people coming in from Germany and people from Tehran. Oh man, this is going to be great. This is really, really exciting. Well, today is the day. Uh, I haven't done a live stream in a while. The holidays have had me like what? And uh, just a real serious case of the holidays and I've been busy, but we're back to live streaming on Friday mornings for me. Let me know where you are. It might be afternoon or night, depending on what where you're coming from. Uh, James is in Salt Lake City driving cross country. Hey, just make sure you're listening and not watching so you're paying attention to the road, James. You want to stay safe out there. All right. People throwing some turkey emojis. That's a, that's a weird emoji for that to be your favorite emoji. <laughs> I understand the beer or the heart or the happy face, but the turkey emoji? All right. Hey, hey, the plan of the day is uh, to design a a fitness blog website. Um, it's going to be probably geared towards uh, the female demographic um, and it's just going to be kind of like an online magazine. So we're going to be doing a little bit of editorial layout, playing with some imagery using Adobe XD, might be popping open some Photoshop and playing with that as well. And uh, that's going to be the thing. But before we get too far, I kind of said it once. I want to say it again. I am so appreciative for my members. Here's a list of just some of my members, my most recent ones that have joined, uh, like Pavin and Becky and Kevin Lee and Craig Wells and Yoav and Krause and Steve and the Marine from Texas and Donald Woodson. These are some of my members. And they became members simply by clicking that little join button um, right over here on my channel. And you can see today, my members actually got a link to download my uh, starting file for this project we're working on, which we are in Adobe XD right now. Um, so they'll have this starting file. They'll have some of the starting resources like images. And there is actually a wireframe. So about, <laughs> I came up with this idea to do a, um, a, a blog, like a fitness blog website design. And literally like 10 minutes before the stream started, I was like, I need to have some sort of plan. And so on a whiteboard, I just drew out a little bit of a wireframe. And this was my thought. This is what we're gonna try to accomplish today. And you can see that this design is right here inside of my Adobe XD file. So I just kind of took a snapshot of it on my phone, sent it via AirDrop, and now we are cranking. We're ready to get going. I'm on a 1920 by 1080 artboard, and I'm just gonna open up my layers panel and call this uh, artboard blog, just like that. You'll notice that when you're in Adobe XD and you have something that's not on an artboard, it puts it on what's called the pasteboard. Sometimes people ask me about that, like what is the pasteboard? It's just anything that's not an artboard. All right, so that's the thing. Um, ooh, how do you send designs to me? 035 Anuba says, um, you could go to my website, jessieshowalter.com. It's right down there in the middle somewhere. And you can email me if you want. Uh, I do have some of my members uh, who've submitted their portfolios. We're gonna be taking a look at those at the end of the stream today and just doing a little portfolio. Woo, portfolio reviews. So I do portfolio reviews. I review work for my members and sometimes for other people. So feel free to send it along. Maybe you'll make it onto the stream. Um, okay. So what do we have to work with? Not much, actually. I have some images. A bunch of them are free stock photography of fitness, of healthy foods, of, um, you know, a, a lot of ladies who are like working out and, and trying to stay fit and, you know, healthy foods and stuff. I have one key image that I actually downloaded from Adobe Stock. Um, and I love this image. I, I think there's a few things we want to talk about here because not only, I mean, I wireframed, but the wire, I saw this image and it was like a big portion of my inspiration for this site. Uh, she just looks happy, but strong and empowered. Uh, she has a great smile. 
um, and she has kind of some assets inside of the shot that kind of it tells you exactly what it's about. You don't think is this is the dog walking website? It's an exercising website of some sort. So I just loved the vibe and the energy here. This is what we call art direction. Okay, so we're looking at an image and going, she looks perfect. I want to use this image to explore this feeling or this emotion or kind of resonate with my demographic that's what we do in art direction and so from this i mean not only am i loving her vibe but i also love the colors that are here so i'm probably going to be using some of this as the beginnings of my color palette i think so that's just it's not the way you have to start a project but it's the way i'm starting this project so i'm just going to drag my happy fit girl let's just call her happy fit girl <laughs> into my project and remember, um, over here on my wireframe, let's zoom in so we can see it. We kind of have this top navigation uh, with a centered kind of uh, logo. I don't know, we're just gonna call it like fitness or something. Um, or maybe we'll call it something trendier. I don't know, maybe. Um, and then we have some navigation items next to it. That's what, this is my style of wireframing, okay? I did a whole video on wireframing annotation and how I do it. You can watch that if you want. Over here is a headline of some sort with some sort of blog post, probably like the most recent blog post that's happening and then this is where i'm thinking my model my happy fit girl is gonna go with maybe some other small blog posts uh over here next to her so i'm kind of utilizing the space um now the question is um you know obviously our top navigation is going to be up here why don't we just go over here really quickly and uh why don't we turn on a layout we got a 12 column layout let's just utilize that for are um yeah somebody says they like the background color emmanuel says that i like it too it's soft uh it's fun um it's it's cool so we could bring our model in here and start doing some of this action um and you know that's not a bad thing uh, boop, boop, boop. we could turn our grid on if we want we don't want a square grid we want a layout let's just i always forget uh, guides, hide all guides. That's the one. Uh, yeah. I always forget that hotkey inside of Adobe XD. Okay. So the question is, do I want to cut her out, completely cut her out? Or do I, um, which I think I do. I think I, I think I like some of this shadow that you see on her. It looks kind of natural and organic. So I could cut her out. Let's do that really quick. Just so everyone sees how you can do it. You might need, if you're out there, you might need to know just enough Photoshop to get you in trouble. So let's let's play with Photoshop. So I have Photoshop here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Adobe stock image. I'm just going to double click it, open it up in Photoshop. Let's say, for instance, I did want to cut my model, my happy fit girl, all the way out of the background. I'm going to click the lock. That unlocks the layer right there. And I'm going to select my quick selection tool. If you don't know which one that is, it's right up here, fourth from the top. If you roll over it, it should give you some helper text. It's not doing that for some reason in mine, but we can select our quick selection tool. The quick selection tool, if you don't know how to use it, you can start dragging it around and it'll start grabbing sections and it's kind of smart, right? It's intelligent in how it does it, but there's an even a more intelligent way to do this. Uh, you just hit this button up here called select subject. Watch the magic, ready? Boom, 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 boom. It's gonna think and it grabs everything we need. Right now, once you're here, you can, if you, if you don't like the mask that it's selected, you can see down here in the yoga mat, it's kind of missed some spots. So we can just help it out and click on some spots. Adobe Photoshop is very smart. It's going to, I think it's using AI to kind of learn what you're telling it to do. Let's hit select and mask though, and see some other options we have now. The next thing we have here is the mask section, and this is what allows us to do some little follow-up work here. It's actually pretty good, and considering we're most likely gonna put this on a similar purple background, it probably works for us. But you could come in here and mess with the radius and the smoothing of things, and you can repaint over certain areas. See how her hair, oh, I'm doing some horrible kind of work there inside of the mask. If we don't like that, we should press Command Z or Control Z and go back. Okay, I like this, I like my selection. Now from here, you can do one of two things. You can hit the, um, the mask button down here um, and it just masks everything out behind it. See our mask that we've created, boom. Now we have our model. So now you could take this, save this as a transparent PNG and pop it into place if you wanted to do that. Um, that's a thing, that's a thing you could do. That's totally a thing you could do. Um, that's not a bad idea. Let's come back over to XD really quickly. And let's draw a rectangle because that's a, because I want those shadows. Um, I'm actually not going to do that. 
so what I'm going to do instead, I just, you're like, why'd you go through all that work, Jesse? <laughs> Not going to do it because I wanted you to know how to do it if that's what you wanted to do. Okay, so I'm going to I'm just going to grab one of these purple colors. I like that purple color. Now you can see the problem is that the lighting has created harsh borders on this. Okay, so I'm going to select my color instead. I'm going to come back in, ooh, not apply, but delete my layer mask in Photoshop. I'm going to take a rectangle and draw a rectangle out. And let's get rid of this thing right here. I don't need my properties panel right now. Let's just double click and fill it with that color, okay? We, it should have, it should have filled it with the color, but it did not. I don't know why. Boy, oh boy. Can we try that again? Yikes, yikes, yikes. What are you doing to me, bro? Okay, let's just do a new layer and we will pick our paint bucket tool. Fill that thing. There we go. Now we got the color, okay? There's a million ways to do things in Photoshop. Sorry we're spending so much time in Photoshop. You're like, that's not my jam, but um, it should be your jam. Everybody should know how to use a little bit of Photoshop. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shrink my happy fit girl down, okay? So that I put her in the frame. I'm gonna add a mask to it. I have black and white selected in my color palette. I'm gonna hit B for brush. I'm gonna make the brush bigger and I have the opacity down at something like 34% with black selected. What that's doing is just knocking the color or the presence of the image out, right? So I'm gonna use bracket and just make it a little bit bigger. Let's take the opacity down so we do this a little bit more gradual. And I'm just gonna brush away these hard edges um, because again, I like the shadows and I don't want to lose them. So I'm just brushing, brushing. Let's go a little bit more. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay. This is just a live stream. This is just my livelihood on the line. Just kidding. No. Okay, so we're just going to brush away some of that. That works. You know, if you, if you brushed away like we did, whoa, some of her hair, see how it's kind of faded out? We just hit X and reverse the, the color selection there. So we put white and it brings the presence of the color or the image back in just like that. And now we have an image that's blended into the background that we know we're gonna use. I'm gonna save for web and legacy. Um, that's the thing you can do. Um, and we don't need it to be this Jai massive. Let's do it down at 2000 pixels wide. That's a little bit more <laughs> reasonable. Let's put it on our desktop like that. And then let's come back over to Adobe XD and we can start using the image that we kind of created. So here we go. Let's delete all, let's delete the original one that's there. Woo, and drag this fella in just like that, okay? Now, our background is a little bit different color, so let's just grab the right color. That, that color works too. Let's bump her up a little bit. I'm digging it. I'm liking our happy fit girl. Okay, so all that just to mask an image to bring somebody in. Um, let's see, is anybody asking questions? It looks like Ankar is asking a question. Is this graphic design? Technically, it's graphic design. Anything that you're doing visually, designing, solving problems, or communicating through visual means is technically graphic design or visual communication. So that's a thing. Um, actually, you know what? That's a great question. I think it's time that we do a little question and answer time with Jesse. All right, so what is the difference between graphic design, UI design, UX design? What's the difference between all these things? Let's just set the record straight really quick. Graphic design, like I said, is anything that you do with graphics or visual means to communicate something. That could, poster design, business cards, websites, all of it technically can fall under the umbrella of graphic design, right? Um, but then what is UI design? Well, UI design is a specific niche or vertical or discipline inside of graphic design where we're specifically designing user interfaces, right? Um, usually those are websites, mobile applications, web applications. Um, that's gonna be what UI design is. That's different than uh, a, a branding or logo designer, okay? That's a very specific niche inside of the world of graphic design. What's UX design? It actually has less to do with visual or graphic design, it has more to do with psychology and understanding users and creating flows and patterns for users to use so that they have a good experience, okay? So for instance, um, you know, you could design the inside of a vehicle, this is what UX design is, you design the inside of a vehicle and the seats are leather and the dash is beautiful and mahogany and wood or whatever, but the seats are in the wrong spot and the dash is on the ceiling, okay? 
all of the visual or user interface elements are beautiful, but they're in the wrong spot. That's user experience design. It's making sense of where things need to go. That's a great question about the types of design. So make sure you uh, you ask lots of questions um, because, you know, questions are good. It's how we learn. And that was a quick question and answer time with Jesse. All right, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'd appreciate thumbs up and likes on the channel and maybe even share it on Twitter or Instagram. Tell people you're watching this right now. Invite them over and join the funness that we're having right now as we design this cool thing. All right, I'm literally like, remember, I'm this is all I have to work off. I don't have a plan right now except for this. So if you're like, man, this guy's really, I wish he had it more together. This is the design process. I'm, I'm figuring things out right now as I go. Um, cause now we have to talk about typography, navigation, all that kind of stuff. So she's a little bit big. I'm just going to shrink her down. I think, um, I did draw this out as a rectangle. And the reason being is it's a blog. There's going to be more areas down below. So I'm thinking we're going to stretch this down and this is going to be kind of the top of our website or the hero section is what people might call it. Uh, Eric Cruz says, what's up, Jesse? What shirt brand are you wearing? Uh, I actually don't know the brand, um, but it says can't skate. Um, because I like to skateboard, but I always hurt myself. Uh, so I don't know what brand this is. I forget where I got this shirt, but I really, really enjoy it. Thanks for asking the question. I like it. I like that you like what I'm wearing. I'm also drinking one of my favorite drinks of all time, and that is my Legend Spicy Nootropic Ginger Drink. Uh, it helps my brain work. It's also super delicious and spicy. Mmm. There's a link down in the description if you want to try it out. Um, I just really, really like that drink a whole lot. Okay. Here we go. Let's do a navigation. Um, again, I want to turn my grid on and I want to keep it as the layout and I want to make it the default layout like that. And what do I want to do next? Um, okay, guys, hide the layout grid is command shift apostrophe. That's what it is. Command shift apostrophe. Is that right? Boom, boom, like that. Okay. Always forget that hotkey. Okay, so let's zoom in. Let's get a navigation set up here. I think what I wanna do is hit L for line, and I'm gonna draw a line across the top. It'd be nice to have some sort of, you know, one of the, one of the things that's really, really nice is having kind of free flowing elements, like we blended our, our model into this background color. It's gonna feel like one really nice composition, but you still wanna have elements that feel blocked out and nice. And so um, there needs to be structure to things as well. You know what I'm saying? So here's the first thing we'll do. Let's take our color, really like this color. Let's put it in our color palette and let's open up our assets panel and put it up there as well. Just for fun skis, just for fun, let's grab some of this yellow action too and let's add that to the color palette. Let's grab some of this. I like this bright kind of seafoam green. Let's add that to the color palette. And then let's grab some of this peach kind of orange color. They're all kind of muted. The whoever took whoever took this of image really knew what they were doing. They art directed this this photo shoot so that there would be uh, quite a bit of all of this like making sense together. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, cool. Let's, uh, boom, let's do that purple. Now let's lighten it up. So it just kind of, it just kind of pops a little bit. That's what I like there, okay? And now it's time for a typography uh, addition. I don't know, I feel like, because it's a blog, keep in mind it's a blog, and when you think editorial, it's nice to, um, it's nice to implement of a pairing of sans serif and serif fonts. So that's what I'm thinking in my mind. I have a serif font that I really enjoy. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I hit T for text right now, or typography, and I'm gonna pop this in here, and let's do something like 10, um, 10 uh, amazing life hacks to get you in shape. I don't know, something like that. That sounds like the name of an article we might read. Let's make this text white. And let's make it a bit bigger. I hate the Helvetica new. I'm thinking I have this, what is it called? Herbert? Herbert, I think. Let's try Herbert. It's kind of fun. It's kind of bouncy. I don't know. It may not work for what we're trying to do here. Yeah, it's a bit yikers. It's not the right, it's not the right typography. It's really not. Okay, so um, let's go back to our selection tool. And again, we're just playing with composition while we're doing all of this at the same time. We want to keep this article um, kind of like near our model 
and that's going to be like the article title. Okay, I'm going to do something that uh, I have installed. I'm going to open up a program I have installed on my computer. It's called Write Font. Um, I like to have some sort of font finding tool. This one is, I believe it's for Mac only. Sorry, y'all. Um, but I do, I, I dig this one. I enjoy it. And I'm able to filter some things out. So let's go to, let's do a little serif font pairing. Um, uh, maybe May Merriweather Playfair Display is another one. Let's look for Playfair really quick. Because uh, that one, yeah, it's nice. Playfair Display. Let's try Playfair Display. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, right font's really cool, actually, because you should be able to, in most programs, like I have my text selected, and I can double-click and apply. No, I used to be able to. Nah, I can't anymore. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's messing up my life. Okay, let's go play fair display. It's nicer. It's a little bit nicer. Let's see. We have some different weights of this one, which is like a, why I like play fair. Let's do a bold of that one. I wish they had a medium. Yeah, I don't like the black of that. Play fair display SC. Ooh, do we have all caps on? I don't like that. And what's playlist? Yuck. No, no, no. No, sir. Um, let's go back to normal play fair display and <laughs> I know everyone's like wow you're so opinionated I'm pretty opinionated about typography let's go hacks to let's just capitalize this this will be the just a bit of a, a ED an executive decision that we're gonna make sure that we capitalize all the things I'm gonna make this uh, auto width text um, that means as I expand the size, it too shall get a little bit bigger for us. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I'm into that. I like that. Um, but let's go. We need to have a a uh, sans serif font that matches this. So I'm going to hold down Alt. I'm going to drag up a new one. Um, let's go newest article like this. And again, let's bring the size of this down. Now I could be doing like start building typographic scale right now, but I ain't got time for that. We got to hurry, 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 because we are going long on this thing. I can already tell. Let's try something we know and love like pop-ins. Uh, that could work. How about open sans? Open sans is nice too. Never use pure black. Keep that in mind. So we're gonna cruise up to a little bit of an off black here and shrink this down even more like that. Okay, now, um, okay, that's looking pretty good. So this is kind of the start. Let's, why don't we grab both of these and just shrink them down together because they're a little too big, aren't they? And this new article one is still very much too big. Here's how I know it's too big. I'm gonna, okay, here's a test. Let's see how close I was to getting some sort of typographic scale um, just with my eyeballs, okay? Uh, am I a failure? Am I a complete failure? Um, how good of a uh, designer am I? Let's see. Uh, first off, I just want to get a little bit of, give me a little semi-bold action on this. Okay, so this is like a little mini kind of headline, right? It's at 21 and this one's at 67, okay? So if I was to come down here and do like a, another headline and come over and do the math and go times two, right? We'll start building out some of our well, that's pretty close, dude. So if you don't know what I'm doing, it's called typographic scale. You start with a body copy, which I really should start with here. Um, probably like 18 or something. Um, and then you start scaling it up by a certain number. So whether that's the golden ratio times two, some other you know form of ratio that you want, that's up to you. Um, so, okay. With that being said, why don't we come down here? And you know what? What is this again? Playfair display? I'll tell you what. Let's come back over to our assets. Let's put character style there. and then. But let's try this really quick. I like open sans. Let's save that character style. But let's go back to Playfair. Playfair display. I, th I think maybe I like keeping the sans serifs just in this instance and we want to use these serif fonts for other things let's bring this down just a little bit um and then i want to extend out i want to keep these on a line i think don't i i do but how to get you in shape ah that looks so much better okay just we don't need that fourth line Ugh. yeah we don't need that fourth line okay let's come in here and i need some content really really bad so let's just come in here and find some content i used to have there's a lorem ipsum generator fill with placeholder text boom yes that's what i want insert some lorem ipsum but i'm gonna make 
a little bit of a shape out of it like that. Placeholder text like that again, boom. But we don't want this one to be bold. We want it to be regular. And at 21, let's try 20 instead. We're gonna wanna mess with the line height as well because that's a bit cramped, isn't it? Just a little bit cramped. So uh, I'm gonna double click the, the little red uh, dot down here, which is gonna extend out my content. That's fine. We didn't need it to be that much content. Boom, like that. Um, okay, coming together into kind of a little article here. I'm digging it. Why don't we just really quickly lock our model in the middle so we don't mess with her anymore. And we'll grab this whole thing and we'll call this article. Name your layers, kids. It's very important to name your layers. Now, um, I like what we have going on here. Uh, let's take some of this typography and let's come up and make our navigation now, shall we? Um, boom, I'm gonna hit paste. I'm bringing this up and okay, we're gonna have to do something like uh, some, some navigation elements here, okay? So we are 47 from the top, 50 from the bottom. That means let's go one, two, three. So we're 50 pixels on each side of our text. That's good. We wanna make this white though. We wanna make it kind of pop out. We only wanna use the black uh, for like minimal amounts of things, okay? Um, unless we flip flop, which we will down here an invert where we go to a white interface, then we're gonna have to use a lot more of the dark color, okay? So let's do workouts. Let's do uh, healthy eating, something like this. Again, capitalizing everything once you select a style, uh, you should stick with that style. Let's do one more over here. Let's call this one uh, weight, I don't know, weight training. Um, weight training, something like this, okay? We're gonna have to close the gap or the distance on these fellas. Let's grab all three of them and use our distribution tools. Then we're going to bring one in the middle and we're just gonna hit our center alignment. This is gonna be our boom. Uh, ooh, let's just calm this one down to training. Let's call this one uh, empower, empower. That's, it's gonna be, oh, you changed the name of my trendy magazine, Empower Magazine. That's gonna be a cool name for our fitness magazine. Okay, cool. She looks empowered. She looks like she's having fun, right? Here's the problem that I'm having. I was thinking about putting something over here, but our model is kind of taking up, she had just the, the way she's kind of directed, it's kind of taking up a lot of our space. So I'm actually gonna offset our model and make her a little bit bigger. Um, I just feel like it makes a bigger statement. Don't you? Do you feel like that? I do too. That will allow us to focus a little bit more just on left aligning the content. I just made an ED executive decision. That's all. Here we go. Let's distribute these yet again. And then we'll shove these ones over to the right and line them up. Beautiful. We have a beautiful kind of navigation. That's all you need really, I think, for navigation, right? Let's take all of this. Bingo. Group them together call it the nav um, and we're done with the nav, okay? So again, in our wireframe, I was gonna do some articles over here, but our model, I just love, I don't wanna change out what our model is doing. Um, I really like her big and strong and fun and overemphasized um, kind of in this thing. You know what would be kind of fun is let's kind of take her up like this over a little bit more and let's put it over the navigation. No, this is where the cutout version of our of our model would be really, really good. So it would, it would have been really cool to see her hair kind of coming up and over our navigation line, kind of breaking the plane. That would have been fun, but it's okay. It's okay. We don't have to do it. It was just a thought, but this looks good. Okay, this looks really, really good. Let's bring this up. Now that it's here, we can make it, I think, a little bit, woo. Let's grab all the elements and make them a little bit bigger, I think, right? Shouldn't we? I think maybe we should. Um, let's, yikers. No, how do we? Have to grow. Oh, you know what? What is this one? This one is auto grow. Boom, 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 boom. Let's make all of them like that. They have to be the right type of text so that when I pull it out, everything grows. That's, a, it's a little bit more visible. It's a little bit more legible now than it was before anyways, so I'm digging it. Just playing with some positioning. Everything's pretty good. Okay, now what we could do is, um, you know what? We could, we could make a button. 
wait, we definitely need a button here, don't we? So let's go R for rectangle, draw a little button out, um, something like this. And then why don't we fill it with one of our co other colors? Like I like, do we like the yellow? Do we like the green for our accent color? Or do we like the peach color? Okay, I need that, I need help in the chat. I need people to tell me in the chat, what do you think is the better color for this one? We're gonna do a pill button for Shurzies. Um, and we're gonna come down here and boop, put something in like this, like read the article and let's shrink it way, way, way down like this. We lost it, where did it go? But I need you to vote in, I need you to vote in the chat. Tell me, do you think this button should be this peach color, this green color, or this yellow color? What should be our accent? They all kind of look good, so that's why I'm torn. I'll tell you what, what I, my preference is after. I'm gonna keep flipping back and forth between them and you tell me what you like, okay? I need to take my text. It needs to be more legible, so I'm gonna go black on it like that. And I'm gonna take the size of this up just a little bit. I'm also going to take the size of the button up as well like that. I like that. Tell me, vote, vote in the chat. Pink, the yellow, some people say. The peach, some people say. It's, it's gonna be up to you guys. Uh, yellow, everyone says yellow, right? Huh? Not, no, nobody likes the seafoam green. Peach plays well off the purple. Okay, so there's the seafoam green. There's the peach. There's the yellow. I tell you what, I know everyone's voting yellow. I'm gonna go against yellow and I'll tell you why. Because when I use this button, let's just watch, let's group it together. It's always, it's always a good idea to look at the different places you'll use a button. Okay, so actually let's do this really quick. Let's just have some fun with XD. I'm gonna do uh, padding, bink, like that. Um, so that now if I type the button out, it will change size. And then with that being done, I'm gonna press Command or Control K on the entire button and make it a component. Let's call this button. Now when we bring the button down, we'll change it. So here's what we're talking about, contrast, right? The yellow on the white, it works. It kind of works, right? It doesn't work as great as the yellow on the purple. Now, if we try the other, the other colors, the green, it punches a little bit more. The contrast is a little bit better. And sure, there's an argument to be made that we could just go back and fix the yellow so that it, it, it works better with contrast. But with working with what we have, which one pops off of both the purple and the white better? Is it the green? Is it the peach? I think the peach pops. Somebody said black. You want me to try black? Just go real, real kind of like, ooh, but I mean, I'm not against it. You don't want to do a pure black though, right? So we we didn't do pure black when we did our article. So we want to take that same color black. Black could work as well. It could be definitely be nice and modern. Um, let's add that black to our color palette. I like the black as well. Um, this keeps us from being maybe a little too cutesy actually, but just for now, I'm gonna explore the peach. We're gonna go with the peach and we're gonna explore it. Okay, so let's get that out of there. Hey, thank you for your feedback. Thanks for thanks for helping. Um, I, st oh, I don't like it. I don't like it though. Gosh, I just said peach and then I don't like it. Uh, you know what? Somebody said black and you sold me. The black is nice. I don't, it's like, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that? You guys are geniuses and I love you and I'm appreciative of you. Um, okay, so sometimes you, it, it takes a, a village to make great design. Hey, you wanna do something really fun in Adobe XD? Let's take our article and then let's turn on our stack, okay? Um, you know what this allows us to do? This would allow us to grab elements inside and move them around if we wanted. Um, and then we can adjust all the padding. So maybe we wanted the button at the top. You would never want the button at the top, but you can. And this, this is a fun little thing to do. Um, so keep that in mind when you play with stuff, okay. I like what we're doing here. Now, one of the things we had in our wireframe was we had this kind of asymmetrical bar. Now, here's why I like this, because everything right now, I think it's looking really, really nice. You guys are doing a great job of helping me design this thing. But everything's very locked into the grid. Everything's following the rules, which it should. But then there comes a time when it's time to break the rules, right? Um, Somebody said it also goes great with the newest article. It sure does. Okay, um, then there comes a time to break the rules and one of the ways we can do that is just by going asymmetrical. So I'm gonna hit R for rectangle. I'm gonna drag a rectangle out like this and I'm gonna take the border off and add just the slightest bit 
of shadow. I like to keep my shadows uh, down below 10% for sure. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because otherwise it's just, they're, they're just too much, okay? It doesn't need to be that tall. It could be something like this. And I kind of want to center it there on the center line. Here's what we're looking at right now. Let's open up our preview and see. See now how we scroll down, we get this cool, fun little element that kind of pops out there. Let's drop some articles in there. Um, and instead of putting them up here, this is actually a good place to put them. I like, I like what's going on here. I'm kind of into it. We'll do some, maybe if we have time, uh, we'll do some fun parallax animation of our model and our stuff as we, uh, as we get a little further down the road. Okay, let's take another rectangle and draw it right here. Something like this, center it, take the border off. And let's open up our elements um, and let's find a fun like energetic workout photo. We're gonna drag it in Adobe XD and drop it right on the shape. I hate that photo, it just not, is not good at that size. This one is a little simpler. See how you can see it like it's more identifiable right off the bat, isn't it? Cool, okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, uh, maybe I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna grab this typography, our big sans serif and our, and our next step down sans serif and I'm gonna shrink them down. I'm gonna make sure that they are both are, whoop, are off black color um, and shrink them down even more. This is at eight. That is unlegible text, unless you go up just a little bit more and it becomes something small like metadata or date, time, that kind of stuff. So let's go up just a little bit more on this and let's do uh, yoga for uh, noobs. That'll be the time the title of this article. And then let's go back and play with our open sans. But let's bring it down to something like 10. Um, and then I tell you what, we're gonna have to introduce a new color to get contrast in between our typography. So we could do something like this. Let's take a lot of this text out there. It's really heavy. This could possibly, possibly be legible. Let's update our line height so it's a little bit readable like that. And let's drag those up. I like this, I'm into this. Uh, everything's left aligned and looking good. Let's take the whole thing over just a little bit, drop this down, and let's group that together and let's call that, uh, I don't know, we're gonna call it something like article. But before we do that, let's bring our san another version of our sans serif text in here. Or serif, yeah, sans serif text. Boom, over here, let's have some fun, ready? Let's, um, Boy, oh boy, I don't know. Did we wanna do this? I was thinking, yeah, let's do this. Let's do a little rotation on it, shall we? Let's go 90 degree rotation, except we don't want normal 90, we want negative 90, like that. Boop, boop, boop. And let's turn this to open sans. It's always time for a little bit, uh, is that what we used, open sans? Somebody said lotto. I wonder what Lotto would look like. That's all right, it's too late for us. Uh, trending, we'll just put the word trending. Yikers, like that. Trending uh, articles, trending articles. Boop, boop, boop. Slide that in, center align it. Looks pretty cool. Okay, now what we'll do is, let's just do one more right over here. Slide it into place. Now let's look at our layout. We don't wanna go past our layout. So we're, we're not necessarily lining up here. Um, but our, our article really should be some, we'll play with this some more, but let's replace our image really quick. I want some food, uh, five minute meals, something like that, okay? Boom. All right, let's look at our preview really quick and see how we're doing. This looks kind of fun. This is so small, it's it's illegible. It doesn't even make sense. So it's, it, it's really important as you're designing to constantly be going back and checking um, checking things as you're doing it because it just, it, it just doesn't make any sense to make things that small. So we're at 16, we're at semi-bold, let's drop it to regular. We've got to increase the line height a little bit. I'm okay with that. Let's press play again and see. That's a little bit more legible, is it not? Okay. Uh, just content wise, we probably don't want to have four lines. Four lines is, ah, it's yucky. So let's not do four lines. See how much better three does, right? And, if we're designing this, our content management system would control that, I'm assuming, uh, in the back end. Hey, you know what? This has been really fun. Let's take a little break. Whoa, let's make sure we're saving our fitness blog. And let's do another little question and answer time with Jesse. All right, ask your questions. I'm looking through the chat right now. 
and seeing if we have any questions that have been asked. Oh, uh, Sharon Tobb says, is it possible to do the same thing in Figma? This is similar? Yeah, it's very, very similar. You can do all this stuff in Figma. Everything we've done so far is like hands down the same across the board in Figma. So that's a great question. Um, people ask about design tools all the time. Uh, Sarmad Ali says, what font combination do you mostly love in web app design? Oof, that's, that's a really hard one. Um, I can't answer that question. I love typography too much. I like to explore and do different things, but that's a great question. Um, let's see, Skillshare class, the future team, Treehouse are some great places to start, but the best way is to just start. Somebody's talking about how to learn. I agree. The best way to start, the best way to learn is to just start and start doing stuff. Follow along with me here, right? Open up a free uh, um, Adobe account and get yourself Adobe XD or Figma or whatever and go to town, start building, start designing. There's plenty of good stuff out there and resources on the web. There's no reason for you to kind of make excuses, okay? Hmm. Okay, um, Tofik says, do you have a, a formula to calculate line height? Yes, I've, I'm not doing a good job of it right now because I'm rushing through, but I would be most likely using uh, a typographic scale and part of that typographic scale is applied to your line height as well. So if you have a 16 pixel font for your body copy, you times two it, that's your sub headline, you times two that again, it's your main headline. And then each one of those now has their own size, right? So 16, its line height should most likely be times two. So 32 pixel line height. When you go up, everything, you just keep scaling it, times twoing it. That's the, the the basics. That's how you get started. I feel like the rest of this is gonna be pretty easy. So let's get back to work. I love the questions. Thank you so much for participating in question and answer time with Jesse. Hey, let's do some more of our design. Um, we, we've made good progress. We've done some art direction, some Photoshop work, some navigation stuff. Um, we've kind of broken some rules and done some asymmetric things, which is pretty fun. Let's grab those whole things together and call this uh, a, uh, we'll call this asymmetrical. I didn't spell asymmetrical correctly at all, just so you know, don't judge me on that. Let's take these two things also and call this hero and uh, we'll lock that, we'll lock the article, we'll lock the nav so that we don't mess with anything as we're going. Okay, um, we probably, you know what's really cool? We don't have time for too much more, but I think the rest of this is gonna pop out, like pop like pretty quickly, okay? So let's bring our, our layout back here. I'm gonna hit R for rectangle. Let's do a big featured article and we are really gonna stick to the grid on this one. Um, and then let's bring some typography down. And again, we're gonna go back to our open sans for this and probably do something a little bit more like semi bold. Let's go uh, latest articles. That's not how you spell latest at all. Um, okay, cool. And then let's come in here and find a really cool photo. Boom, something like that. Uh, is that the coolest photo? I just found a bunch of stuff on Unsplash really, really quickly. This one's a little bit more energetic. This one's a little bit more beast mode, okay? So we want we want beast mode. Um, all right, let's get some spacing there. And then what we'll do is you can double click on any image and you can kind of reposition. So that's good. We want to see the full sit up and crunch there. And let's take the border off this. Let's copy and paste one more time and fill it with a linear gradient going from black, whoa, hello, to on the other side of the gradient, black, and, but the top side, our transparency will be down. And then we will bring our shape. Woo, let's just resize. No, get the, is it locked? I don't know why it would be locked. That is so weird. Okay, so whatever. So we just wanna create a gradient overlay so we can put some typography at the bottom of this thing. Um, like that, okay? Let's come in here and again, we're gonna grab some of our typography we used above, we're creating consistent patterns, right? But uh, this time we're gonna make everything white and we're gonna size it up. Everything's staying in context. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let's bring it down to the bottom. Okay, let's do uh, ab workouts that really, watch this, ready? Workouts that really what? That really work, get it? Man, I should write. I should totally write for this company. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great clickbaity title. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, sometimes I crack myself up. Um, beep, 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 beep. Let's stretch this out a little bit more and let's double the amount of text that's in it. And it's okay that um, it doesn't have like a button or anything in here. I don't think we need that. I think you can click on this whole section, right? That's great. Okay, let's grab that whole thing, group it together. We're gonna call that an article. Now, we could do the same thing over to the right. What did I have on my artboard? I actually had like images with titles next to it. Um, so that's a thing we can do too. But I wanna have a little bit of fun I'm not gonna spend a lot of time doing this, but I will say I wanna use some responsive resizing so that if later on um, this thing stretches and changes, it's actually already kind of doing it, isn't it? It is kind of doing it. Res responsive resize is on. You can see if I turn to manual, um, it's staying anchored to the left. Um, but maybe if I st also stay anchored to, not a fixed width, anchored to the right and the left like this, as my artboard, let's move this thing out of the way, as my website shifts, oh, 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 so too should my stinking article. It should also, not a fixed width, but a fixed height. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, that works. Um, okay, so what you also can do is come in and grab the text um, and you can say, hey, I want this to say anchor to the bottom left. If you say bottom or top left, it's gonna try to do that. If you say, anchor this to the left and the right, it's gonna try to expand as you go. Um, the right thing was done there. The correct answer was to the bottom left and bottom right. So as this stretches, see how it stays with it. So a little bit of responsive resizing, that stuff's pretty cool. But what you'd also have to do is come up to the artboard and turn on responsive resize as well. So now hopefully everything's working together, see? Ooh, look at that, okay? So not gonna spend a whole lot of time, but I thought that would just be a fun thing to show you guys. Do be thinking responsibly when you're designing. It's a, it's a big deal. People people need it, people dig it, people are into it. Um, okay, let's come over and open up our grid, our scale yet again. Um, you know, and this is where that might actually work out for us. I'm gonna, I wanna click this over and do more of like a two thirds layout. Um, boop, boop, boom, like this. Nah, let's stay back here like that, okay? And then what I wanna do is just take my image, paste a new version of my image right there. Boom, I'm gonna come over this way. Yeah, let's do the image big, yeah, let's do the image smaller. And then we'll do the, um, the actual typography here a little bit bigger. Let's grab a different image, so we're just mixing things up. Let's do, let's do a food image there. And then we're gonna come down and do a similar thing down yonder, down below. Let's line things up there and let's grab another cool image. That's a cool one right there. Go in, perfect, okay? Now, again, let's steal typography because when we steal typography, it means we're creating consistency and we like consistency, don't we? We do. Um, okay, so let's stretch this up though this time and let's add a little bit more to this. So for instance, this should say something like, uh, August 25th, uh, 2021 or something. Uh, well, you can't write an article in the future. So let's do something like that. <laughs> um, one, two, three, it'll make a solid line for us. And then we'll say Samantha uh, Treehouse. Somebody said the word treehouse earlier. That's what made me think of that. And then uh, let's come back up here and grab this section. Uh, we have to unlock our article so we can borrow our text. I would, whew, I'd be a lot more consistent if I had time, but here comes our article text. Let's just make it area text and stretch it out like this. Boom, something like that. That's kind of nice. So now we created a new typographic lockup. Let's group it together. Do another one down here. Boom, except this doesn't say yoga. This says uh, keto revealed, okay? And then this one says tricep day i don't know something um i'm not trying to actually launch this magazine whatsoever okay now here's where you might have to cheat things a little bit everything it just looks so funky doesn't it everything just looks wrong because the gutters are so tight so this is where we could come in and change the actual gutters of our layout because they're not really they're not serving us well are they so we could change the gutter width um, and that might help us a little bit. 
Um, and then, you, you know, again, changing the column width is going to do the same thing. Notice how the, the gutter width and the column width change as you change them together. But if we basically, if we need a little bit more space, um, we're going to have to change the gutter width because why? I want this to whoop, slide over. I want to have a full column in between and I want to have a little bit more space. And this could stretch all, this needs a little bit more. Ooh, stretch that out. And boom, stretch that out. Something like that. One, two, three. Uh, something. So it's a little funky. It's a little bit off, but it's looking a little bit better. The space here is looking a little bit better. It's it's not looking great. I'll tell you what. I'm going to be really honest. I'm very aware that it's not looking great. So we need to just play a little bit more with this gutter situation. And the reason I'm really playing with it here is because this is, I think, where it really makes the most sense. Um, when you see this layout done the way it is, it it's making the most sense. Let's let's stretch the these articles to be what they need to be. Boom, something like that. And then we just make sure we kick these in to their space right there. And then we just swap them. You know, it'd be really, well, you could, but you don't need to, but you could turn on, um, you could turn on whatchamacallit layouts and just swap these around really easily without having to like be really, really tedious about the whole thing. Okay, does that look a little bit better? Let's turn the layout. It looks a little bit better. They look connected, but they don't look, you know, they look connected without looking disconnected, I think. Um, so something like that. Let's not Let's not stay on it forever because it's imperfect right now as we speak. Hi, right, Chihuahua, we have responsive resize on. Let's take that off really quickly as we just stretch out our artboard. Did you notice that? When the artboard is on, or the responsive resize is on the artboard, and we try to move things, everything's gonna move. So if you don't want that momentarily, you just take that off really quickly. Okay, so um, let's actually go back and let's just wrap this sucker up real quick by putting like a gigantic footer. And because we've been using the black um, and that worked out really successfully for us, why don't we do a black footer? Uh, let's fill it with our off black because otherwise we're choosing one of these colors and that's just too much, right? But the black kind of anchors it. It makes the whole thing strong and empowered while still being feminine um, and on brand, I think. Uh, that's what I think. So let's take responsive resize off one more time and move our footer up and move our artboard into place just like that and then we could turn it back on everything's cool everything's legit okay uh, i think we've pretty much done everything here so let's get rid of our our whatchamacallit our wireframe um this all now probably needs to balance be balanced a little bit i probably want to bring that up just a bit and we start balancing some things and then you start dropping you know all your links and stuff in the bottom. I'm gonna build this footer super duper fast. It's not gonna be the most exquisite footer in all of history, but it's gonna be something. So let's take our, our logo, we'll pop it right there. Easy, easy win. <laughs> and then we'll take our, uh, let's take this and just bump these up a little bit in size. And one, two, three, whoa, and four. Um, and then we would have some, some sort of sans serif links underneath, right? So boom, like that. Let's take the um, rotation off that thing, turn it to white, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, just like this. Let's call this uh, training, uh, eating, um, let's see, diets. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to put here and uh, community. There you go, let's do something like that. And then take the article name and let's just command or control R for repeat grid and just repeat a bunch of links out because they don't need to be perfect. And then boom, we'll just duplicate some of these across the board and then we can adjust just for a little bit of realistic, something like that. Let's take that off really quick. Boom, we made ourselves <laughs> we made ourselves a header or a footer, excuse me, really, really fast, okay? So something like that. I actually, you know, my OCD's kicking in. I'm like, I just want them all to have the same amount of things. All right, so now you have a footer, okay? Kind of fun. Um, boom, 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 boom. This is fun, okay. Um, let's see, should we do a little bit of prototyping on this? We totally can. 
Okay, so we have our blog. Let's do a little bit of prototyping just so you get some prototyping fun out of this deal, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this over to a new version. I'm gonna call this proto, oh, I'm not spelling correctly today, prototype one, okay? Um, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take everything, I'm gonna group it together. It's in one, whoa, except for our hero, that should have been grouped together as well, okay? So we'll call this the website, all right? It's in a group called website, and you're like, why did you do that? Well, that way I can move it, or what I can do is I can take my artboard, take the responsive resize off this thing, and then shrink it up to be right on that line where people will see it, okay? Now when we view our artboard, we can scroll up and down, we can still see it pretty nicely. Okay, pretty cool. But what we wanna do is, we wanna take some elements, and as we scroll down, we want those elements to move into place. So if I want on my next kind of command, as I kind of tap down and scroll down, I want these elements to move into place and these out of place, these are gonna have to start uh, out of place, right? So here, let's take the opacity of that down. Let's take the opacity, let's move these down, opacity down, move these down, opacity down, move this down, opacity down, okay? Something like that, right? Um, okay, bueno. And then what we can do is do a new one over here. This is called prototype, whoa, go back. Prototype two, boom, boom, like that. And then we're gonna take the group and move the whole group up because we're gonna do like an on tap kind of gesture. On tap, the whole thing moves up. And then we can come in and find all of our elements like this, like our article and everything. Um, so let's bring the opacity of it up. Opacity of all these will go up. And where'd our little title go? The opacity of this one goes up, okay? Then we're just literally, we're gonna move all these back up into place. Boom, 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 like this. But don't forget where you've, we're looking at where we're going. Don't forget where you came from, right? So let's move this girl over to the right and our article. And this one can move over to the right like that. Okay, let's do a quick prototype animation between the two. I'm gonna select the entire artboard, no specific element, but the entire artboard. Let's make sure we're on our prototype tab. And with the entire artboard selected, I'm going to drag my prototype over there, not on tap, on game and keypad, and I'll select in the keys, the key area and press down on my keyboard. I want it to auto animate to prototype two, ease out, let's do it, let's lengthen this like 0 0.7 seconds, okay? So far so good. And then what we'll do is we'll go back the other way, making sure we press up on our keyboard this time, okay? Now let's prototype this thing and let's see if we get any parallax animation. Whoa! Oh, that's really fast though. It's very, very fast. So let's slow this thing down, shall we? Um, we need to go, let's go two seconds and let's go ease in and ease out. And let's go do the same thing the other way. Ease in, ease out, two seconds. Whoa, two seconds, okay? Let's try that again. And I'm literally just right now, I'm going press on my keyboard. Fun little animations back and forth. Now, you can play with this all you want, but like one thing that I don't like is that my my girl and my uh, my little asymmetrical thing are moving at the same speed. So I wanna speed that one up. Um, and another thing I don't like is these aren't moving like from far enough down. I want them to move up even further and do some more traveling. Um, so that's something that I wanna do. So let's go back and try it again. So see how, yeah, see now we have a little bit of, a little bit of different motion there between our asymmetrical card and our girl. That's pretty fun. We get some fun kind of things happening. I dig it. Okay. Um, okay. I, I feel like that's good for the day. That sets us up pretty nicely. Um, yeah. Oh, somebody said, uh, Sagrain said, wow, I didn't know you can do such animations on the designs. You totally can. I mean, we could do simple stuff. Right, like you in prototype mode, you can grab the, uh, bum, 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 bum. you can grab like an element 
and say, hey, I want you to prototype over to this other thing on tap. Um, but that's just a really quick, easy way to do a little bit of parallax animation and get that effect um, just to show your developers or stakeholders or whoever, hey, this is what I'm kind of imagining um, as the user scrolls down. We can't really do that same thing on scroll yet in Adobe XD. We might get there someday, uh, but that's it for now. Hey, I tell you what, uh, let's do one more question and answer time and then we'll move into um, our portfolio review for the day. This has been fun so far, but let's move into our question and answer time with Jesse. All right. Uh, let's see, Anchor says they aren't really mutually exclusive. I think we're talking about UI and UX design in the chat right now. Somebody can be a UI UX designer and not know anything about graphic design and vice versa. I agree, but disagree, right? You can be a UI designer, but you should probably have some graphic design skills and don't overcomplicate what graphic design skills are, right? They're visual design skills. You can't create a visual interface without some visual design skills. And so there's a lot of people, some people in the chat were talking about transitioning over from other careers, uh, tattoo artists, photography, uh, maybe they do traditional print design um, and that, you know, you have some sort of visual skill. So if you don't have a visual skill set, you should probably practice building up that visual skill set. You should read books, like there's a book I recommend to most people called The Non-Designer's Design Book by Robin Williams. This will teach you some of the basic foundational principles of graphic design or visual design. That's a good thing to do. Mark Grant says, can you do that scroll thing on Sketch? I don't think so. I don't think so because Sketch, as far as I'm aware, does not have auto animate like um, Figma or Adobe XD have some form of auto or smart animate. So no, I don't think that you could. Uh, what rules should we consider while designing to make the developers work easy? Wow, that's a great question. That is such a fantastic question. Um, I want to point you to a video on my channel. I'll answer your question right now, but I want to find that video so you can go back and watch it. But I did a great video with one of my friends named Justin uh, Sainton, and he uh, is, owns runs his own development shop. Um, and I did a video with him called What Developers Want from a designer. And so um, let me just boop right over here. This is the video. You should go check this video out. What developers want in a designer with Justin. Uh, he is awesome. He's funny. He's smart. He runs his own business, all that kind of stuff. So you should definitely check out that video. But let me give you a couple of paraphrases out of that video. Um, they want you to be good at communicating. Um, written and verbal communication. So um, they want you to document your designs. That's one thing that a lot of us as designers, we don't like to do. We don't like to document our designs. Hey, this is what, uh, you know, the design, not just, hey, here's my design, design file, work with it. But instead, hey, here's why I made these choices. Here's why I use the button like this. Here's the consistent spacing and padding um, in the design file. A lot of design uh, software is similar to like Adobe XD. They have this ability to share and they have a some sort of development, um, you know, space. So we can create a link in Adobe XD and share it with our developers. And that's going to allow them to have the development environment where they can see code, they can download assets. And I'll show you what it looks like. And I'll show you what the problem is um, and why so many people so many companies are creating spaces like this, right? Different types of development spaces. The reason people are creating so many development spaces like this is because they want to see consistency. They want to click on areas and know what the spacing is. Okay, this is 28 pixels, but in between this button and this thing, it's 49 pixels. What's the reason behind that? There's no reason. I was designing really, really fast and I, I was inconsistent. I didn't document my design very well, right? Um, okay, so like the spacing here is 26 and this one's 20. And then from here to here is 52. Is, 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 is there some sort of rhyme or reason here, right? Um, okay, so the spacing between this image and this image is 35, but between this image and this next space is 64. So we actually need to create consistent patterns for our development teams that every time they look at a file, they don't have to reinvent the wheel, spacing, padding, color. You wanna use consistent colors. This is why we defined an off black. You'll notice here, right? Here's our unnamed color. This is the unnamed color, right? Well, we're still using that same unnamed color 
and we're using that same unnamed color again. We should probably name that color, give it a color name, a variable, something our developers can reference all the time. Maybe it's off black, maybe it's charcoal, I don't know, but something that they can constantly reference back to, right? Likewise, we have our unnamed purple color. We wanna create a variable and say, oh, buttons always use charcoal off black and hero images always use our lavender. So you create consistent patterns for them. Um, developers tend to be very programmatic and they think logically. And so they don't want to think about random wild cards constantly. So if you're doing that, it's probably, probably a bad idea. Let's answer some more questions. Um, let's see, can you do a separate video on advanced prototyping? I have some videos on advanced prototyping on my channel. You should definitely watch them, but I should start doing some more on the live streams as well. Uh, let's see, Ben says, starting as a front-end web developer soon. However, my background is mainly in design. Any advice? That is a great question, Ben. Um, I'm excited that you are starting on a journey and, and broadening your, your stack of skills and you're utilizing that code skill that you have. Um, I would say that there's you have a very unique position to consider the other side of the coin more than yourself, right? Some of the most successful teams are the teams that are able to consider um, other people on the team. Consider their time, consider it really valuable. That way you don't say, hey design team, I need you to do X, Y, and Z amount of work for me because my time matters more. Likewise, the design team should be going, hey, they shouldn't be going, hey developer team, I'm just gonna hand you a flat file and make you figure things out randomly. That's bad, right? So one of the best things is you have this, this place of being a, a, a bridge in between the two worlds. Um, now that's one thing I would say. If your question is more about your own skill set, um, I think you just need to spend the time playing in code quite a bit and you need to use the skills that you know, right, uh, from design and bring them over because there's some of those skills. They, they definitely, they correlate with each other. Um, where do I get my photos? Any advice for free sites? I use Unsplash, I use Pexels, um, and I sometimes if I need like a specific thing, I might go to Adobe Stock site. Um, but I don't really use like Stocksy or some of those other ones that cost a lot, a lot, a lot of money. That's just not my jam. It's not my bag. There's a lot of great things. 90% of what we use today was from Unsplash or Pexels. So just think about that. Um, let's see how to consider white space. White space is your friend. That's how I consider it. Um, but don't make it so much your friend that it becomes your enemy. That's what I would say. Um, right. So like white space again, is our friend like we didn't we didn't crowd things so much that uh they had no room to breathe right Let, like let's go to our our article we didn't we didn't do this and this like that's ah, that's really ugly but we also we also didn't do this watch ready we didn't do this Look at, look at the lack or like way too much white space, right? This looks awkward. So all of a sudden white space has become our enemy here. So you have to use white space uh, in a way that highlights the elements without over highlighting the elements or under highlighting the elements, right? Okay, so that's how you use white space. As your friend, not as your enemy, but play with it, be comfortable with it. A lot of people are very uncomfortable with white space. Um, and you know, but it allows your design to breathe quite a bit. Uh, okay. Let's see. I'm an upcoming UI UX designer. Currently I'm working with a, a Bavarian government website. I'm nervous. I've never worked on a high profile website like that. Any advice? Yes. Um, my advice to work on a really high profile website or project is to keep it really simple. Um, keep it simple, um, and focus on what you're good at and don't get wrapped into the design by committee thing, but really focus on solving problems. Um, if you do that, I think you're gonna be okay. You wanna solve the problems in the simplest way. Most of the time, the simplest solution is the best solution, um, and the worst solution is the one that everybody has their hands in, especially when you get to like a government site or something that has lots of decision makers. Everybody's gonna wanna say this is the most important thing, but at the end of the day, you have to be the one that's strong enough to say, hey, if everything's important, then nothing's important. So what is actually important here? What do we want users to do when they come to this website? What's the primary, secondary, tertiary actions? Those are the things you're gonna really want to focus on. All right, I think we should move over because we are just about out of time. We are way out of time. I wanna move over and I have time today to focus on one, uh, one portfolio to do a little bit of review. 
And the reason we do reviews on this channel is to uh, just that we can all learn. We give some constructive criticism and feedback, um, and we try to be helpful by critiquing uh, other designers' work. This is not to say that I'm the fount of all knowledge. I just want to be helpful in some way, shape, or form. And so it helps me to review these portfolios because it reminds me of what I need to do and what I need to know uh, when I'm working on my portfolio. So this is Mark White at markwhitedesigner.com. Um, and it's here's what I love about this right off the bat. Um, I get a fun, kind of exciting, here, let me just stretch this up so we see the whole thing. A fun, exciting kind of image of him. I like the colors, uh, it's modern. Um, he has a great smile, this is awesome, right? Um, and the tagline is very, very clear. I'm a UX designer because I want to create a future that I will be a part of. Now, here's what I will say. I feel like one of the skills that we all have to have as designers is copywriting. And we don't like that because copywriting is hard. Um, you copywriting has a few rules, right? We want to as quickly as possible answer people's questions that they're going to have right when they get to the site. So depending on where Mark is at on in his career or on his path, it depends on what he might write here. If he's looking for work currently, it's going to say something different than if he is not working, looking for work, but instead looking like maybe looking for a full-time job or looking for freelance clients, or this is just his portfolio because he's already employed and, and he's happy with where he's at. So you have to kind of say those things, right? So let's open up developer tools really quickly. Like what if this said something like, uh, let's see, I'm a UX designer because, um, uh, boof, and I don't even like that tagline up there as much, but it could say Mark White. Hi, I'm, let's, let's start with the other one first, shall we? Let's start with the other one first. Let's just rewrite some copy here. Like, hi, I'm Mark. Okay. So we, we updated that. And let's update this one now too. Uh, I want to create the future I will be a part of. It's very, very generic. Hi, I'm Mark. Um, I, uh, boop, 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 boop. I design, um, mobile and web interfaces. Uh, and I love, um, I don't know. What does he love? He looks like a guy who likes craft beer. Okay. Boom. I design mobile and web interfaces and I love craft beer. Okay, here's what this does, right? Tells me who he is. Uh, it tells me what he does and it gives me a little shout out of his personality that matches the smiling face. Okay, I like this much more. This is much more personable and informational um, right off the bat. In two seconds, if I'm somebody who's looking to hire somebody who is good at mobile and web interfaces, Mark's my guy, right? Now, if I if that's me, I'm like, I'm really looking to hire somebody who can make me a web or mobile interface. And I come here and it said, uh, it said this, uh, I want to create the future. I go, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. I get it. What does that mean though, Mark? Right? <laughs> okay. So um, it, somebody says I'm a UX designer because it pays well. Sometimes, sometimes it does. Good call. All right. So that's what I would say for all of us out there, be clear, be concise, be quick to get your point across and define who you are and what your purpose and your va the value is that you bring. Okay. Uh, when I click learn more, where do I go to the about me page? This is where you could talk more about other things. Uh, a goofy human first musician, second lover of tech. I like that. I like the character stuff. That's fine. Let's look at one of these portfolio pieces, the meme op piece as it loads up. Mm hmm. I take a sip of my spicy nootropic ginger drink. Okay, here's the problem. This is not the big wow factor that I'm looking for when I jump into a case study or project. Your electric scooter running low on battery, can't find a place to charge it. I got an app for that, but it's branded it looks like, but there's nothing that makes me go, wow, I want this type of project. Again, whether it's your homepage or it's your project, you got to hit them in two seconds, okay? This thing also, we were talking about white space, teeny tiny small, but I want something that's beautiful and amazing like this up at the top. Give me a beautiful display of what you've done. And then you can start branding and going into the case study. This is fine. It's a good mixture of visual um, as well as written. It's, it's not the most exciting case study, I'll say. Um, you got things that are cut off. Why? It doesn't need to be cut off. I'm, I'm guessing that you have things inside of like some sort of container element that's cutting off or I don't know. I don't get it. Um, you know, it just, it's a little lackluster in my opinion. Again, see this white space. That's a big no, no. That's the, that's the misuse of white space. Um, 
but nothing about this just says wow like i feel like am i like am i at the right scale in my web browser everything just seems really really small doesn't it everything seems really small it's here here's okay here's my observation from this case study it doesn't start with a bang it's too long don't read you don't tell me what role you played in it right away case studies are great but they can be really long and tedious and i want some sort of wow factor right away um i want you to tell me if it's a concept project, that's fine, tell me. But if it's a real project, tell me what you did for the company and how this improved their life as a company. Did it get them more revenue? Did it get them more followers, subscribers, users, downloaded applications, whatever, like you know, monthly active users, whatever it is. I need you to tell me those things right off the bat. Give me a too long, don't read section. Give me wow factor. And then brand this a little bit better, I think, as you go down the page. Keep my interest. Also, it's not a bad thing to use a mixture of media, video, prototype, GIF, animated GIF, fun things. You got to keep the interest and this is, it's just not really doing it right now for me, okay? Um, that's, that's my thought on that project. I think it's probably a cool project, but it's just not hitting the wow factor. I think he tried here. Look, this is a little bit more informative. He tried to put some wow factor, but it's just very, meh, meh, very flat. I have this black website, everything just has to kind of float in space on the black website versus pow, I'm gonna brand this thing out, make it really, really amazing. Now, if you don't know how to do that, my advice to you would be go to something like Behance um, and cruise some of the portfolios that are there, um, pieces of work that are there. Let's, let's find like a really killer one. I tell you what, let's go up to the top and let's find, let's find, some interaction design stuff okay let's do a little hunting here Nah, we don't want that let's go discover here we go sorry now we're doing it discover i want some not graphic design i want ui and ux design here we go um sorry everybody i sing while i do stuff it's really weird i know let's let's go to this job finder what is this project pow okay wow that's beautifully done it's a little lackluster as well, but they're integrating some elements there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This, this looks, I can't even read what this is, but it's, it's capturing my attention right off the bat. Look, branded, beautiful. The colors carry down. The illustrations match. Oh my gosh. It's like its own little website. It's presentational. It's gorgeous. We have a prototype. Look, this is a video. They're using different media, right? To like interest me and wow me. Oh, look, they put some mock-ups there. Like this is like mind blowing. It looks amazing. Again, I can't read anything here, but it's keeping my interest, right? It's really exciting and fun. Look, we're using the brand and the color to create this beautiful experience. Let's keep going down. Oh my gosh. Everything, everything is laid out. Gorgeous. I love it. I don't know who this is. I want to hire you. I don't Alexander Karkoff. Great. I love it. You've done amazing work. I appreciate you very much so, sir. Um, this is a fantastic case study. Um, and if I spoke your language and needed you, I might hire you for surezies. So I just want you to see, do you see the difference here? The difference between this and this. Mark, I think you're a great designer. I think you have passion. I think you are talented. I think you're crushing the game. But one of the things we all need to work on as a designer is presenting ourselves well. So take that extra time and the work that you've done. And if it's too hard to get it on your own website, dude, it's really easy to put it on a Behance site. Very, very easy. So um, these are probably, this is one long image that he designed inside of Adobe XD, most likely, or, or some program, um, or separate images. Here comes this, like, and here comes the separate image, right? So he had an image there, and then he had a video he popped in and he had another image up top. He literally just made one long thing. He sliced the pieces out of it and then boom, he had everything he needed. So, hey, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. I think that's that's where you need to go, okay? Again, I want to say thank you to my members. If you are interested, please become a member. Hit that little join button uh, underneath my channel banner and you will get my ending file that we worked on today, as well as all my other starting files. Uh, and you'll get behind the scenes and community posts that you only have access to. Um, so maybe consider joining these amazing folks, becoming one of my members. Man, I'm so thankful for everybody. Thank you for joining me on the stream today. We'll be back here at the same time next Friday uh, to explore some more UI design. Maybe it'll be in a different design program. Maybe we'll be doing some UX stuff. Maybe we'll be doing some no code stuff because that's kind of on my mind lately. Stick around, um, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up, smash that like button if you wouldn't mind. I appreciate your support and being here. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching.
talk to you next time.